It's a game called Timeline Challenge. Uh, Timeline Challenge, if any of you have ever played Timeline, this is basically an expansion of that game where there's a whole bunch of different ways you can bet on things. Uh, if you haven't, basically the idea is you're betting on when different things happened throughout the course of history. So each one of these cards, which will go in this pile right here, refer to different things. This is the invention of the spade, the death of King Arthur, the assassination of Julius Caesar. And for each one, you have on the back of the card the year in which these things happened. Each of you is going to choose a piece that's going to go on this board. You're going to start at this start point. The player to get to this finish spot first is going to be your winner. What's going to happen is whoever is in first place on this board, whatever spot they're on is going to correspond with a different challenge. Everyone in the group is going to do that challenge. You're going to get points based on how you do in that challenge. And you're going to move forward that many points. So if I win this, I'm on this green challenge and I get two points, I would more move forward two spaces. We go to the next turn. Again, whoever is in first, whatever spot they're on, we're going to do that challenge and we'll resolve it. Players will move and we'll do the next turn. There's a handful of different challenges. Each one works in its own way. So if you're on this green spot right here, this is going to be the timeline for challenge. What you're going to do is you're going to take the top four cards of the deck. And you're going to put each of these right here. We've got Angie. That would be, I guess, the release of the single Angie by the Rolling Stones. The invention of chain mail, the invention of the parking meter, and the invention of Viennese coffee. So what you're now going to do is you're going to bet where on the timeline these inventions each fell. So you'll see there are different years up here, and there are different numbers down here. So if you think something happened between negative 500 or 500 BC or BCE and 850, you would put 1. If you think it happened between 850 and 1300, you would put 2. So each number corresponds to the different range, and you want to guess which range each of these cards falls in. <clears throat> Everyone's going to have one of these boards right here, and they're going to use this board to enter different numbers, and the numbers that they enter are going to be basically how you resolve each challenge. And you'll notice each board has a symbol that corresponds with the symbol here. So for example, you're going to bet where did, when did Angie, when was Angie released? So if you think it happened after 1970, you would bet 9. So let's bet 9 for that one. Then you've got the invention of chain mail. Let's say you thought that happened in thir between, let's say you have, thought that happened in 1400. So between 1300 and 1600, we'd put 3. Say you thought the parking meter was invented between 1930 and 1970, you'd put eight. And let's say you thought the invention of Viennese coffee, let's say you thought that was between 1600 and 1750, so you put four. So everyone's going to play, make their guesses. Then you're going to turn over the cards and reveal the answer. And each one you get right is going to be worth a point. So Angie happened in 1973, that's after 1970, that would be worth one point. Chainmail. <laughs> happened nowhere near where I always thought it was. So instead of between, being between 1,300 and 1,600, it was negative 400. The invention of the parking meter was between 1930 and 1970, so we get a point for that one. And the invention of Viennese coffee, I forget if I actually put four, if I just bumped it, but we'll say we got it right. So that's between 1,600 and 1,750, which is four, so you get a point for that. So in this case, you would get three points, and you'd move forward three spaces. Second challenge you could potentially be on is this red one that says the bet. So what happens with the bet is you're going to take a card, you're going to put it right here, and here you're betting on one card. This one is the invention of the banjo, and you're betting where it happens using the same number system we used for the green one, except this time you're going to bet all four of the spots are betting when this happened. So if you think the banjo was invented in, I don't know, maybe it was in the 1500s, maybe it was in the 1800s, what you could do is you could put one bet for the number three, so that's between 1300 and 1600. You could put another bet for the number four, between 1600 and 1750, and another bet for five, between 1750 and 1820. And then maybe you want to bet for number three again, because what's going to happen is each one of these that's right is going to be worth one point. So if you were feeling really good about your answer, if you thought it was between 1300 and 1600, you could set all of these to three. Or if you wanted to spread out your bets, you could bet on a few different possible answers. And again, however many you got right, you're going to get that many points. So again, in this hypothetical example, the invention of the banjo was actually invented in 1764. 
that would be number five on this board. Our hypothetical person bet on five, so they would get one point. Another challenge you could potentially get is the split. And what, how each of these works is actually spelled out on this card right here. What you're going to do for the split is you're going to deal two cards. We've got the first performance of the modern circus and the invention of invisible ink. And you're going to bet, you're going to put basically how many years you think elapsed between these two. It doesn't matter which one happened earlier and which one happened more recently. But let's say you thought there was a good 420 years between them. You would put zero for your first number, four for your second, two, and zero. This is 420. Everyone's going to reveal their answers, and then the closest player, so whoever got the distance closest to being correct, they get to move four spaces, or they get four points. Another card you could have is the combination. You've got four cards. You're going to put them on these purple spots. The invention of bleach, construction of the White House, the invention of the metronome, and the invention of cement. So now the question becomes, what order do you think these four things happened in? So if you think the first thing to happen was the invention of bleach, you would put the circle at number one. If you think the second thing to happen was the invention of cement, you would put the star at number two. If you think the third thing was the invention of metronome, you'd put that at number three for the square. And if you think the last thing that happened was the construction of the White House, you'd put four next to the triangle. Then what we're going to do is we're going to flip these over. Bleach was invented in 1785. White House construction was constructed in 1792. Invention of cement is 1817. So it actually works out that these are in order, the first, second, third, and fourth. But let's just say it was like this. What we would do is we'd use these one, two, three, and four tokens. And we'd sort these by order like that. So that way we can see which ones are right and which ones are wrong. So this means that if you put one for the square and you were right, you'd get a point. If you put one for the circle, that was right. If you put three for the circle and you were right, you'd get a point. So each one of the numbers that you got correct, which turns out our example board got none of them right, uh, you would get a point. Final scenario is the right date, which is this yellow one right here. Yellow one, you're going to take a card, you're going to flip it, put it right here. This is the first private detective. To be honest, I don't know exactly how they determine what is or isn't the first of something for something like that that feels a bit subjective. But the first private detective. Everybody then takes their historical board and they enter what they think is the right date. Let's say you think the first historical detective came on the scene in 1232. This is the one challenge where you're going to use this plus or minus symbol all the way over here. If you think it was in the Common Era or AD, then you would use the plus sign. If you think it was before that, you'd BC or BCE, you would use the negative sign. You're then going to flip over the card. This one is 1833. And what's going to happen is you're going to get to move one space for each correct digit. So if you were wrong on the plus or minus part, if you thought it was negative 1232, uh, then you get zero points because you're colossally wrong. But if you're right about that, you're going to get one point for each digit you got right. So you get one point for the one, zero points for the two, one point for the three, because it did happen in the 30s, even if it was a different uh, century. And then zero points for the last one. So this will get you two points. Move forward two spaces. There are two other special spots you can come across. Uh, you might notice there's a line on the board here. There's a line on the board here. Whenever a player passes through that line, we're now going to do a bonus round for the two players who are in last. And if multiple players are tied, then we'll do it for multiple players, more than two players. Uh, this is basically a chance for the people who are losing to catch up. So this first one right here, with the two faces facing each other, that is sudden death. It says the challenge is between the last and second to last players. If more than two players in these positions, they all participate. The last player draws a card and places it next to the board. So we've got right here, the invention of suspenders, 1822. Next player draws the next card. They have to decide, this one here says the first saloon, did this happen before or after the card that's already on the board? So I think it happened before they put it here, I think it happened after they put it here. So they thought it was before, we flip over the card, they are wrong, that means that they are eliminated from the game, we get rid of this card. If there's more than two players, then players keep on doing this until we're down to just one player. But the key thing that's happening is each round that people are getting correct, 
the board is getting a bit more complex. So if this is out here, the invention of suspenders is 1822, and the first saloon is 1844, 41, and now I draw the invention of toilet paper, it could potentially be before 1822, it could be after 1841, or it could be between the two cards that are out there. So as the game, this round is going along, there's more and more cards out there. You have to find where that card's gonna go in that timeline. The other challenge is more or less, again, between the last two players. Um, so what's going to happen is somebody, is somebody who is not one of those last few players is going to draw a card. Again, this one is Invention of Toilet Paper. They are going to look at when that happened, 1857. Whoever's in last now has to guess. Now has to guess what year toilet paper was invented in. Let's say they guessed 1900. The player who has the card then says more or less. More would mean actually it happened more recently than 1900. Less would mean it happened before 1900. Then the next player in order goes... The next player goes, uh, they guess a different year, and the referee again says more or less than that year. People keep on going, everyone can take multiple turns if need be, until you get the exact year correct. If you get the exact year correct, then you get to move three spaces. Uh, I will point out uh, that for this round, whoever's in last place is gonna guess first, and then the order of guessing after that is gonna proceed clockwise for everyone who's participating in that challenge. That's basically how the game works. Again, whoever gets to this finish flag first is your winner. Uh, there are a couple of variants you can do. One is if you want to have only two players, then the way it'll work is basically going to be the same thing, except for those two challenges. Uh, you ignore the more or less challenge. And with the sudden death challenge, the player who is trailing can score three points. But if the player who is winning wins that challenge, then they just don't move. So basically winning that challenge if you're already winning just means that the other player doesn't get the benefit of scoring those points. The other option is you can play this game as teams. So if you're playing as teams, the teams can discuss whatever they think is the right answer before they submit that as their answer. If there's only two teams, you would treat it as basically being a two-player game. That's how you play Timeline Challenge.